I think we're ready to start. On behalf of St. Nicholas Parish, and also as part of the Dighton, Town of Dighton's 300th anniversary, I want to welcome all of you here. Our presenter today is Dr. Manuel Luciano de Silva from Bristol, Rhode Island. He's a physician, a historian, an archaeologist, an epigraphist. He has published a number of books, one entitled Portuguese Pilgrims at Dighton Rock. The latest book was Columbus Was Portuguese. He has 13 copyrights registered with the Library of Congress. And we welcome Dr. Dr. De Silva. Thank you very much for the invitation. The lights out. All the lights out. Number one, thank you very much for coming on this rainy afternoon. 64 years ago, I repeat, 64 years ago, I was a student at New York University, pre-medical. And because in Portugal I had a wonderful teacher of history, and I always liked history because my father was a sea captain, he told me, when you go to America, I want you to go and see this monument, Dighton Rock which has a, the name of a Portuguese navigator. So I said, okay. Then when I was in Brooklyn, New York, I started looking where Dighton Rock was. And I said, my God, it's so far away. How do I get there? Well, at the time I was 18, and in those days, to be an adult, you have to be 21. So I said, how can I get from Brooklyn, New York, to go to see Dighton Rock? I had to wait until I was an adult so I could get my driver's license, take the train from Grand Center to Providence, and then rent a car and look for Dighton Rock. So I did that. There were no highways. I was able to rent a car in Providence, came on Route 6, then came looking for Dighton. And when I got to Dighton, I saw no houses, no center of the town. I said, what the heck is the center of the town? Even today, it's tough to find out the center of the town. Imagine 64 years ago. So I went to a grocery store that still has the light, asked the lady, could you tell me where Dighton Rock is? Oh, I do not know. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. I said, ask that man. So I asked the man where Dighton Rock was. I do not know. So I was living in New York for uh, almost two years. And when you're in trouble, you go to the police. So I ask him, what is the police station? They direct me to the police station. I told the policeman there that I was a student at New York University, that I was writing a paper about that rock. Could you tell me where the rock is? Oh, you wouldn't find it. So you're on the other side of the river. The other side of the river. Well, we'll make a drawing. And I'll tell you to go to Berkeley Police. So, me, the Greenhorn, takes the road and goes to the Bristol Police. Of course, when I got there, the policeman that was there was so kind to me. He uh, was amazing, what a gentleman. I said, oh, you won't find it. Leave your car here. So he took me to see Dighton Rock. I'm going to show you the slide that I took on August 24, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 1948. What were you doing in 1948? Were you alive? 1948? This tells you how much long I have been involved with Dr. Rock. In 1961, I gave a lecture at the Boston Public Library. 
with so much enthusiasm because everything that I do, I do it with vigor, with enthusiasm. And one lady said, Doctor, I'm amazed. I never saw anyone speaking about Iraq with such enthusiasm. Why? And I said, Madam, because that Iraq is my mistress, everybody had a good life. And I've been saying that Diet Rock is my mistress until I found out that Dighton is the name of a woman. How do you like that? Her name was Frances Dighton. She was young and beautiful. Why? Because she married an old man. And the old man in homage to her gave the name of a farm, all this territory, including Berkeley, gave the name Dighton. And that's why our Dighton Rye came to me. Okay? Now let me start showing the slide. What I'm giving you is lecture number 511. And believe it or not, this is going to be my last lecture, my last public lecture. How come that thing doesn't go? Because from now on, I'm going to concentrate getting all my slides about Dighton Rock, Newport Tower, about uh, Columbus and all that to... Uh, make videos and uh, uh, here we are. All right, it's suggested. This is a map published by the National Geographic magazine and does not have the name Dighton. How do you like that? <laughs> okay, here it is, Berkeley, Dighton Rock State Park. Fall River, the Vetra, Bristol. Look at this, on the heart of the Narragansett Bay. Narragansett Bay is a delta, has 11 rivers. And that's why when Miguel Cotrial came, he was looking for the lost brother. That's why he went up the river. Wine number 42. Number 42 is the latitude of the tip of Cape Cod. Because the Portuguese navigators, when they came from Lisbon to North America, they say, okay, our point of reference is the tip of codfish at 42. And they left on May and August the 20th. Every caravel had to appear in front of the tip of Cape Cod. Those that appeared went back to Portugal. Those that did not appear stayed in the United States. In the year 1502, Miguel Cotrial and his 20 men on the caravel, Figa, Figa, did not come to the tip of Cape Cod. Therefore, the other two boats went back, took with them Indians, 51 Indians, and Miguel Cotrial stood on this side. But he left his calling card, his name, and the Portuguese symbols engraved on the Dighton Rock. How do you get to Dighton Rock? Taking Route 24, exit 10. Follow the signs, Dighton Rock State Park, two miles. We came up and bought the land to create a park. And then three years later, the state of Massachusetts expropriated the land to create the Dighton Rock State Park. So, you can be see how long far my name 
has been connected official with Dayton Rock. The Dayton Rock Park has 100 acres. How big is that? It's as big as the Vatican in Rome. As big as Pope Benedict XVI. Equal to the area of Dayton Rock. This is the picture that I took on August 14, 1948. Look at Dyton Rock, like a crocodile. <laughs> Look at the area of today's Stanton Yacht Club. See? Zero. Isn't that interesting? No wonder I was born in the other last century. Long time ago. So I have to come next, next day, to look at Dighton Rock. I saw nothing, because the face of Dighton Rock was covered with mud, sewage from the city of Taunton. You know, S-H-I-T, that's the way Dighton Rock was covered. The right rock is an immigrant rock. He came to this area 11,000 years ago, when we had the last glacier, and that's why you see boulders all around New England. You go to Europe, the same thing. And that's the reason why the rock is upside down. Weighs 40 tons. The area that has the inscriptions, the face, is 55 square feet. It's a big area. The first document that refers to the rock is the riding rock, because everybody wrote on it. As a matter of fact, some people say that the name Dighton is a corruption from riding, 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 Dighton. Now, they did not know that the true name was Francis Dighton. Okay, so it's not that speculation doesn't hold any water. When the river was covered with ice, Dighton Rock was underneath, crying. And this is the reason why the top of the rock is broken. 1962, when I was at the Leia Clinic in Boston, I said, I'm going to propose a bill to get the rock out of the water. Hey, what a crazy idea. This poor guy, well, look what he was going to do. Leave the rock in place. So much so, I have documentations, all this, on my, on my website. So I spoke with Representative Simonelli. He made a proposal. We had a public hearing. And let me tell you, when we had public hearing, a professor from, Bra from Harvard University, Francis Rogers, came and spoke against moving the rock. Oh my God, I was so disappointed. This is cruel, I'm trying to save the monument. So, we lost one year, I spoke again, we'll represent Simon Allen. Someone else, no, nah, doctor, no, nah, we are wasting time. Uh, no, do it. No, I don't want to do it. Look, you propose the same bill. I'm going to find out at Harvard University when they have Easter vacation. During that time, we put to a public hearing. Ah, oh, you're a wise guy. Put it, do it. We did that, and the goddamn thing was approved. <laughs> and... Once it has approved, it was approved in the House of Representatives and Senate, signed by the governor. It was published in the newspaper saying that the state of Massachusetts approved $50,000 to get the rock out of the water. Oh, Professor French Rogers was fuming. Nothing. You see the zigzags that you have to do? Uh -huh. Now, when the rock was elevated, look at the size of the man. We did not know that the rock had this buttock. Look at how big. This is the part that is now oxidizing. 
and the state of commonwealth does not pay any attention to this. Come on. For 10 long years, the rock who got out of the water was placed on a dry coffer dam only with the protection of a chicken coop. I mean, he, the, the chickens are better protected than Dayton Rock. Look at that. Everybody threw rocks, Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola. Some of the kids went over and they stood on top of the rock urinating protecting a state monument. Another bill, another public hearing, another $50,000 to build a pavilion. Okay? Now, looks like a chapel. This is the coffer dam, this is the pavilion. Now in the pavilion, you have Dighton Rock in a glass enclosure. This is not covered by sewage anymore. This has become a precious stone. Precious stone. No vandals can anymore inscribe on it. Is that a difference? Is that a miracle? Four more years when the Massachusetts Commonwealth was broken. I approach my fantastic friend, Jean Long, Chairman of Voice and Means Committee from Fall River. I said, Mr. Long, I'm here to ask you for $50,000, doctor. The Commonwealth is broken. I cannot do anything for you. I show him the New, the New York Times. You know this paper? Yeah, the New York Times. Well, read it on page 8. It says that the Congress has approved $30 million for permanent structures to celebrate the bicentennial. So this newspaper is worth $25,000. Oh, let me get a picture. I bought the paper for you. And that... Uh, representation law. He saw my determination. He did a lot of zigzag. I went to Portugal on vacation and he sent me a telegram. Doctor, you got your museum. How about that? Inside of the museum, the most complete Maritime Museum, scientifically, in the United States, is the Maritime Museum of Dighton. Okay? It has a replica of Vasco da Gama. The most important voyage 500 years ago. A gift from the Portuguese Prime Minister. This replica was 27 years in the Maritime Museum in Lisbon. It's here. This is a replica of Caravella Victoria that Magellan went around the world, 1519 to 22, three years last 11 days. A gift from the King of Spain, Don Juan Carlos. Do I have to tell you the maneuvering that I had to do together with my fellow members of the Friends of Dighton Rock Museum? The letters that we have to write. To give you an example, we wrote a three-page letter with copies of my books to the King of Spain. One month went by, two months went by, three months went by, nothing. Then, in a meeting in my house, my wife said, like a wife always has the sixth sense, you guys want to get an answer from the king, send the entire, the entire letter on a telegram. It's going to be delivered to the king on a silver platter. 
I said, okay. I went to the Austin Union, gave them $68, and three days later, the ambassador from Spain calls me, his highness wants, has a great pleasure of offering you a model of Victoria. How about that? It is. Fantastic. Original document. No museum in the United States has such a thing. Now, we, we talk about Americans go to the moon and leaving the, the American flag. Now went to the Mars, and that ruler left that the American flag. Well, five centuries ago, on the third period of the discoveries, the Portuguese took with them an already made monument, padrão, made out of marble. All the Portuguese symbols and the top, the cross of our Christ. I said, okay, we're going to write another letter, send a copy of my books to the president of the Gold Banking Foundation, Mr. 5% Shell. And my letter was so persuasive that Dr. Zered Purdigam, 11 days later, said, we have great pleasure in offering you the padrão. Because I said, we don't need any money from you. It has to be done by our artisans in Portugal. Send it to us, 714 kilograms. Look at that. Compass of road. Now, another thing. The people of Massachusetts do not know the value of the Commonwealth. The value of Commonwealth 500 years ago was catfish and pine trees. Pine trees for the boats, for the houses. Okay, and John Rowe, before the independence of the United States, he said, I want to offer a catfish replica to be hanged in our House of Representatives. Of course, the others represents good nothing. Why do we have to spend money? What an idea, smelly idea. And Jean Rose said, look, I didn't ask you to pay for it. I'll pay for all you if you pay for it, put it up. And it has been, look at this. On the House of Representatives, a symbol of the richness of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And the People from Commonwealth do not know of this truth. They don't teach these in the high schools. This is beautiful. Ah, uh ah. -uh. But if the Museum of the Rock is such a complete maritime museum, I should have the symbol of a codfish. Cuttlefish, it is there. See the symbol there? Look at that. That's that a beauty. And who should give it? The Academy, Academy Cuttlefish of New England. It's very much apropos. It's there. That's the most complete maritime museum that you have in the United States of America. When you talk about discoveries and the meaning and the significance of such a museum. We have inside of the museum six panels. Six. This one gives you the physical uh, history of the Dyke Rock, I just told you. I was the one that did all these waves in the wood. Okay, everything that you see in these panels. The cord. Glass, the screws, the numbers, the letters. My wife paid half and I paid the other half. Why? Because we are both nuts. <laughs> now, let me tell you, the, the organization that we have incorporated in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, it has, it's a non-profit 501c3. 
we could submit the expenses and discount on income tax. I said to my, my wife, nothing doing. We're not going to do it. We never did it. Here is the picture of Miguel Cotrion. Did he exist? Did this man, man exist? That's the house where he was born, that stands today. In anger, the heroism in the island of Trasade, in the heart of the Atlantic. The proof, this is the first passport to North America. A royal child, King Manuel, let it be known that Miguel Cotrial, Miguel Cotrial, is even given permission to go on his trip to North America. Now, everything that I show you on my research is because I'm a medical doctor. For me to be a medical doctor, I have to be a scientist. And for me to practice internal methods for 45 years without having one case of malpractice, I had to be a goddamn good physician. And I made my diagnosis based on electrocardiograms, based on the material things that I see, not because of hearsay. That's the way I conduct my research on that rock. Everything has to be documented. See? Everything has to be documented. Here it is the most famous photograph of Dighton Rock in the entire world. This is a photograph taken by National Geographic magazine, published in January 1975. Picture taken at night. Because that rock is like a woman. A woman is much more beautiful during the night. We men know that. Okay? This is the picture of me when I was young and handsome. 40 ton calling card. Dr. Melda Silver above theorized that type of rock in Berkeley, Massachusetts proves Portuguese explorer Miguel Contrial was the first European to set foot in what became the United States. The sketch on the left shows Dr. De Silva's reading of some of the markings of the 1511, Cortreal's name, and the Portuguese coat of arms and the cross of order Christ. We are going to examine this photograph close up. We are going to examine the electrocardiogram in, you know, in detail. Here is the final electrocardiogram. This is the conclusion of the original inscriptions on that rock. Flag number one, the Portuguese coat of arms like you have here. Look at this. See it here? The U shape. Then the cross with 45 degree angles one like you created have. the idea of historical cartouche. Cartouche, the way Miguel Portrial wrote his name. The Portuguese coat of arms in V-shape or triangular, U-shape, V-shape, the cross of water Christ with extremities of 45. And the number five, the only European countries that use the Arabia numerals is Portugal and Spain, because the Arabs were not in other countries in Europe. And number five, in cemeteries and tombs in the 16th century, the five, was written like a capital S. Okay? Here is the date engraved on that rock. Well, this is a drawing. Are we going to see close ups? National Geographic magazine taken at night. See? One and one. One, a big S, one and one. You see this today. As a matter of fact, when I take people to see that rock, I say, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to shut all the lights, completely dark. Don't be afraid. 
You've got to wait 30 seconds so that the rods and bastonets of your retina reconstruct themselves for you to see, okay? So, just pay attention, I'll tell you a joke, whatever, and then when your eyes are adjusted, then I'll show you the rock. And uh, I use a flashlight, and everybody says, wow, wow, wow. They see the inscription. This is the coat of arms of King Manuel, the king of Miguel Cordial. Look at the shape. See? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm an American citizen. And I tell my sons, my oldest son Manuel is here, I said to them, I love America more than you guys do. And you were born here. Uh-uh. I am in America now by my choice. My choice. You guys were born here, you had no choice. That's the difference. Okay? And if you today go to the Tanta Library, go to the Library of Congress, any library in the United States, and you consult any Anglo-Saxon encyclopedia, Britannica, Collier's, World Book, any of them, they do not give at this very moment no information about the Portuguese coat of arms. No information about the cross of order Christ. That's a crime. That's an insult for a country as the United States of America that prides itself of knowing everything. That's wrong. Come on. I talk this way because I am an American citizen. I love this country. Look at the Portuguese coat of arms, a triangle inside a triangle. And then you say, Doctor, show me one like it on that rock. That's what you see today when you go to that rock. Ladies and gentlemen, this is impressive. An American don't care anything about this monument. That's not fair. Everybody knows about the Portuguese nautical school of Saks. Look, all the crosses we have in the United States, U.S. Constitution, it's a school teaching. Uh -uh. This is the school, academic school of Portugal, where the cadets, they study. Amazing, but look at the cross. Now, when we talk about crosses, and you go to Harvard University, you see a big book there by Will Berry. He has a collection of all the crosses in the world. 317. But he has the cross of water Christ. Okay. Look at the National Cathedral where Vasco da Gama, Camões, next to the right here is a replica of Dyke Rock. Look at the cross of water Christ. 45 degree angle. You'll find this cross all over the place, in gardens, in churches, in cathedrals, in Brazil, in Angola, in Mozambique, in Guinea, in Goa, all over the place. Because that, uh, the cross, Portuguese cross of water Christ, is the only cross in the world that has the extremities terminating in 45 degree angles. Tower of Blank. A monument that was built in commemoration of all discoveries on the very place from where Vasco da Gama, Pedro Escobar, Bartolomeu Mudir, Corte Reais, everybody left Lisbon. Look at that. 
Well, that's what you're going to. That's what you're going to find engraved on that rock. Another national symbol. Again, picture taken at night. Look at that. Look at that little thing. You see, going this way, that way, this way, and look at this. Look at the two national symbols. No other nation. We used to have a television program with the right individual. Stand up. That was an expression. I said, of 200, 214 independent nations that we have in, in the world, we asked, which nation has a national symbol, a triangle inside a triangle? Stand up. Only Portugal can stand up. What uh, about 214 nations that has cross of water Christ terminating in 45 degrees angle? Stand up! Only Portugal stands up. This is a combination of, you know, putting all the names of the uh, taken at night. When I told you that this symbols exist that do not appear in any Anglo-Saxon Anglo-Saxon encyclopedia, it's a pity. The uh, coat of arms of Azores, where Miguel Cotrial was born, the cross is there. This is his brother. Gaspar Cortreal, the brother that he came looking for. Born on the same, on the same house that still came there. In 1971, after 30 years of research, I published a book entitled Portuguese Pilgrims and Data Rock. 10,000 copies. Sold across America in less than a thousand days. Okay. The name that I want to give to this book was Portuguese Intercourse in New England. Because in Europe, when we say intercourse, communication, intermingling, I'm having intercourse with you people. But in the United States, intercourse is coitus. It's sexual relation. When I came to the United States 66 years ago, to be gay was to be happy. Okay? To be intelligent was intel Now intelligence in the United States is espionage. Gay is homosexual. You know, people change. Isn't that interesting? So I decided to put Portuguese pilgrims and Dieter Rock. <coughs> This is uh, uh, Prince Henry the Navigator, the statue that is in Fall River. I had to ask permission from the mayor. We had to get a, uh, a ladder, etc., because they thought I was going to uh, steal the statue. This is me, because I did not have a profile photograph of the Miguel Cotrion. And looking back, be an ideal man like I am, to be a doctor, to defend Dr. Rock, I think my picture fits there very well. Now, I have a tremendous website in Portugal and a website in the United States. I'm going to give you papers for you to take home. I have this book entirely with photographs, everything, on my website that you can read, you can print, can do anything free of charge. Because my wife, we have been doing this, as you can imagine, spending so many thousands of hours, so many thousands of hours, for love. Didn't make any money with this business of the rock. I made my money in medicine, but not 
with my mistress. No, I love my mistress. And my wife also loves our mistress. Look at the influence, the power of a book. Rock of Dyke, a rotary restaurant. The town where I had my high school. And a Portuguese American industrial, Antonio Marx, they went for Bethlehem. He developed five companies. And because he had a son and a daughter that liked Portugal very much, he, when he came to the United States, was poor. He didn't have any place where they would sleep. I said, I'll build you, I'll build you a hotel. And nobody knew what the name of the hotel was going to be. When I published my book, Portuguese Spilton, he asked me for a copy. I sent him a copy. Autograph. I said, Dr. I need five more books. I have five different companies I want to offer to all my five friends. I sent him five copies. Autograph. And the secretary, Dr. Mr. Marx wants you to send the bill. You tell Mr. Marx that I have so much admiration for him, I am not going to send him any bill. And then he honors my book, Rock of Light, and everybody thought that I was 50% owner of the hotel. No. No, I had no penny. I have slept, I have eaten there. But just to give you an impact, an impact, a uh, power of a book, the written word. Now, here we are in Tomar, center of Portugal, built by the Portuguese Templars. But a pope, in cahoots with Philippe de Bell of France, they disseminated all the Templars. The Portuguese king, Don Denis, says, oh no, we are not going to eliminate the Templars. They have been our best friends for our independence and to defend country against the Moors that are still in Granada. So you know what the King Don Denis did? Said to the Pope, oh, we'll satisfy your wish. We eliminate the name of Templars and we're going to keep the same men. Instead of them obeying the Pope, they obey the King. And I'm going to call them the Knights of the Cross of the Order of Christ, instead of Templars. And they became, from the Templars, became the headquarters of the Cross of Order of Christ. And when Prince Henry the Navigator was 18 years old, and this Order of Templars was very rich, the richest in the country, Prince Henry had a dream of starting the discoveries. And he said, Papa, I have a favor to ask you. My son, I'm the king. Ask me anything. I want to be the administrator of the cross of order Christ. The father, you're too young for that. Father, you said that you are the king. That Anything I ask you, I'm your favorite son. No, I have to consult. So he consulted Obi-Wan and he nominated Prince Aaron the Navigator to be the administrator of the Cross of Order Christ. And that's from the Cross of Order Christ they got the money to build the ships, to build caravels, to pay, to create his nautical school in Sargs. Smart cookie, that prince. Well, anyway, let's go inside. Inside of this structure, there is a round altar with eight arches called Sherola, which is a copy of the whole sepulchre in Jerusalem. Because the Templars 
when they return to Portugal, they wanted to, to build a structure similar to where the whole the Jesus Christ was buried. Eight arches. Well, let's look around the Narragansett Bay and see if we find any structure similar to this. Interesting. New Port Tower within the same Narragansett Bay. What do we see there? Eight arches. Look at Tomar, the headquarters of Cross of Water Christ, eight arches, and Newport Towers. Another miracle. On the other side, opposite to Newport Tower, we have Ninagrat Fort. And on the ruins of Ninagrat Fort, we have Open Beach Conant that are now in the Brown House in Providence. Nobody pays attention to this. I'm the one that has been smelling these things. Okay? Well, if this, this was examined by the Metropolitan Museum in New York and said that's a cannon that was used only at the end of the 15th century. Okay? We know now in Abeja, Portugal, where this uh, uh, cannons were built. This is the military in Lisbon. Also in the ruins in Ennegrat Fort, a sword was found. A sword. Look, see? It's also on the brown house in Provence. Here we have Portugal. We have the sword in Ninograd Fort, and this sword is from the military museum in Angra, where Gaspar and Miguel Cotrial were born. Here we are explaining to you again this beautiful 42. I have in my hometown a foundation, a house where I was born, and we have a library next to it. And this morning, at 10 o'clock our time, I had the priest, priest of the bishop, of the parish where I was baptized, to give an open air mass. And I gave him my message. Say, say that tomorrow at the Dieter Rock State Park we are celebrating Saudade Day, a nostalgia day, to celebrate the departure of Gaspar, Miguel, etc. Six, six pages in his book, published in 1928, saying that the devil made the inscriptions of Dieter Rock. Oh, come on! A certain idea is stupid. I mean, you can get all the names that do not appear in the dictionary to classify this. Another one is Jesus Christ. How come Jesus Christ came to Dieter Rock to do the inscriptions on Dieter Rock? And people still write about this. That's stupid. Roman. They were busy building their Colosseums, their cloacas and all that. Phoenicians, Egyptians, look at the Jews, Cartaginians, Chinese, Vikings, oh yeah, look, look, where is that? 21. All these hypotheses are simply stupid. Stop it. They do not make any sense.
Let me just give you one example. A Phoenician. Okay? How come Phoenician theory came to that rock? In 1781, Corte in Paris, France, who was a researcher of the origin of the word, found out that the word penis was follows and was first used in Phoenicia. So he took a look at the drawing of Dieter Rock inscription made by Stephen Sewall in 1768, and without ever seeing Dieter Rock, he decided to add a penis to the drawing, and this way the Phoenician theory for Dieter Rock was born. Look what he did. He added a penis. You see the penis there? What the heck? Come on. And in this country of ours, the United States of America, we have people that still write about this. That's criminal. You want to see the, 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 the Viking? You know, we have a lot of people in this part of the world from the Vikings. I'll, I'm going to show you why the theory of Viking came up. Again, I am examining this like I am examining an electrocardiogram. We examine electrocardiogram with millimeters. I'm not an adventure historian. I examine this thing as a medical doctor, which the Dieter Rock was never examined this way. Never. Look at this. In 1834, Rhode Island Society of Brahmins, Rhode Island, sent Christian Raff of Copenhagen, Denmark, a copy of the Titan Rock inscriptions, based on the tradition of the Viking sagas that a Viking navigator named Farfan came to North America in the year 1000. Raff decided to alter, to change the center of the drawing of the Dieter Rock inscriptions which he received from America. Look what he did. He added three letters, F-I-N. This is fraud. Look what he did. F-I-N. You don't do this to an electrocardiogram because you are sued, you go to court, and you lose. How come you change the electrocardiogram? Now, of course, the, my friends are Irish and the Vikings and Scandinavians and Sweden, they get all upset with me. All upset with me. Okay? Now you, the Vikings have a square rigor, a sail square, cannot navigate against the wind. The great discovery of the Portuguese was the triangle Latin sail that can zigzag against the wind. Those were the Portuguese that were able first to navigate in the high seas. Give a credit where credit is due. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final slide. When you talk about Dighton Rock, there are only three men that spend more than 30 years of their life studying that rock. Professor de Labar, there was a professor of psychology at Brown University, a scientist that bought a summer home in Berkeley. He bought a summer home, beautiful house, with 22 acres of land. You know what he called it? Miguel Cotrial Farm. That beautiful. Okay, and this is, is from Brown University. This is for course a teacher at New York University. I met him there when I was a student. 1948, the NYU was the greatest university in the United States. And let me tell you, New York University has 22, 22 Nobel Prizes. 
My first alma mater is not something else. 22 Nobel Prizes, okay? He was a teacher of Portuguese, and when I look at the catalog, I look at ah, Portuguese. I thought in America nobody knew what Portugal was. So I went to see him, sir. Oh, yes, he was all surprised, you know, he became friends. Became friends, and then we did things together with Dr. Rock. And me, the, the nuts doctor, okay, graduated from NYU and graduated from the best medical school in Portugal, Coimbra, okay? My wife and I, we have been really having a lot of fun with my mistress, our mistress, James Dighton. I want to thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Now, those of you that go on my American website, you'll find out that my website is divided in two editions, Portuguese and English. And then, each edition is divided in history, medicine, social, and family. Okay, all in that order. And let me tell you, you're going to find hundreds, thousands of articles on my two websites. On September the 5th, my friend, are going to be 86 years old. How much longer do I have? I don't know. But let me tell you, you can judge my, my voice. I still have <laughs> a few more lectures to go. Thank you very much. Hopefully many more. Most of it is Portuguese food, and it's all labeled, so enjoy yourself. It's coffee, punch, and iced coffee.